So let's try this problem out here. So the question reads, what was the third lap time? Okay, sounds good. So they specifically use the word third. So there might be two lap times already, and then we're talking about the third, and there could be more, who knows? But I really just wanna care about the question's information, the what, and then the third lap time. Sounds good. So I'll go ahead and just go one, two, and three, and this is the one I'm looking for. Then it says, the mean of these three lap times is 62 seconds. Okay, sounds good. I'm just gonna write down my given information. I'm just gonna be casual about it. My mean here equals 62 seconds. And then it says two laps were 59 seconds and 64 seconds. Okay, great. So I have here 59 and 64. Cool. So with that said, everybody, is it clear before we get started on, you know, taking these numbers, throwing haymakers, throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping for the best, is it clear to you right now that we have three numbers, one of them is missing, and we have the mean for the three numbers given to us? Is that clear to you before we get started? Good. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take advantage of our formula. So again, even if you're confused about that, here's how we're going to handle this. Our formula says the mean is equal to adding up all the numbers, so the total of all the numbers, and you're going to divide by the number of numbers. And there are two of these things that we already know. Everyone, help me out. What is the mean that we were given? It's right there. That mean is what? 62. We'll write that down. We'll plug it right in. Boom, right there, it's 62. We were given it. Then we also know the number of numbers. Everybody, if we knew the third lap time, how many numbers are we given? How many numbers are we working with? Three. Absolutely. And so what we know right now, everybody, this is about equations now. This is what makes it easier if you've had the chance to practice equations. It becomes a lot easier. So now that we know that 62 is the total divided by 3, watch this. I'm going to get rid of that 3, and the only way to do that is to work backwards. Because I want to get total by itself. So let me multiply by 3 on both sides. And once I do that, bye-bye right there. And now we just got to think about 3 times 62. 3 times 62, that's going to be 186. We can prove that right over here on the side. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. That'll be 186. And that's going to be equal to the total. Everybody, how do we get the total again? Can you give me the one word, the one operation? How do we get the total again? How do we get the total? What is total the same thing as, as saying, yeah, adding everything up. Adding everything up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace total. So here's total. I'm going to replace it with what it means. The total is going to be the three numbers added together. So my missing number plus the 59 that I have right here plus the 64 that I also have right there. Boom. That's my total. This can be replaced. So I'm going to toss this, you know, wherever here at the bottom corner and watch this. Help me out, everybody. Let's add the 59 and 64 together. What's that going to give us? Boom, boom, right there. 9 plus 4, that's 13. 5 plus 6, that's going to be 11. Carry the 1 is 12. So that's going to be 123. My party people help me out now that we're at the last step. This is essentially x plus 123. Now, I don't care how bad you think you are at solving equations. I think we all know what this final step is. Working backwards, what's the opposite of adding 123? It's going to be subtracting 123, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's subtract 123 on both sides. There on the right, there on the left, and let's see what magically happens once we do this. Cancels on the right side, 186 minus 123 
that leaves us with three, that's a six. And there is our missing number, 63. That's gonna be answer choice D, 63 seconds. And there we are. So my party people, before we continue, who wishes that there was uh, an easier way to get this done? Who wishes that there was a more understandable way to get this done? Okay, so even if the pure mathematical way confused you a little bit, let me take a couple of moments here to show you a very understandable way if you understand what mean truly is. So if you haven't had a chance to listen in on that part, for me at least, when it comes to the mean, we are talking about the balance point. We are talking about the balance point. So watch this. The mean that we're given is 62 seconds. Let's put that as the balance point right here. Here's our balance point, 62 seconds. The two laps that we're given are going to be 59 and 64. Let me, let me show you something real cool. Everybody help me out. If I go ahead and write 59 down over here, how far away is 59 from 62? Help me out. 59 from 62, that is three away. Let me put that in a fat red right there. And then over here with the 64, my party people, let me grab that 64. If I place it on the right side of 62, how far away everybody is 64 from 62? Yeah, that's two away. Sounds good. Now this might make some people mad. This might make some people mad, but this is how easy this problem can be if you understood what mean actually means. Watch this, everybody. We are three away over here, two away over here. Everybody, would you agree if I said that to make this completely balanced, we're missing a one, because one plus two would be three, and that'd be three and three? Is it true that if I had a one right here, that would be balanced, because we would have three and three? Yeah, that would be balanced, wouldn't it? And one final question, everybody. What is 62 plus 1? What's 62 plus 1 going to be? Oh, yeah, look at that. There's our final answer. All done. D and we are good. And this is why it pays to actually understand an idea instead of memorizing. All right, so let's take care of this question. It says X plus 3.5 equals 8.2. So whenever we want to solve equations, remember that all we're doing here is working backwards from the order of operations. That's it, everybody. We're just working backwards from the order of operations. So when I see that we have x plus 3.5 equals 8.2, sure, you might get distracted by the decimals, but all in all, what we have to do is do the opposite of adding 3.5. Everyone, what's the opposite of addition? Just give it to me. Yeah, the opposite is going to be subtraction. So it doesn't matter if it's a decimal or a fraction or a large number or small, we're going to follow the same, the same exact process. So we subtract 3.5 from each side, canceling from the left, leaving that X by itself. That's what we want, remember? And then now we're going to go ahead and subtract. We're going to line up these decimals for subtraction, so we'll just leave it right there. And we can't do 2 minus 5, so we'll borrow a 1. I'll go ahead and borrow 1 from the 8, making it a 7 making that a 12, and then we have 12 minus 5. Everyone gives me what? What's 12 minus 5? Yeah, that ends up as 7. Appreciate that. And then we have 7 right here minus 3. So 7 minus 3, that ends up with 4, and there we are. Our correct answer here is 4.7, and that is answer choice C. So again, before we move forward, just remember, we are going ahead and performing the opposite operation that we see, to get the variable, or in this case, the x, by itself. 